Hello and welcome back to the Wisdom Factory. I'm Heidi from the wisdomfactory.net and I am located in Italy. And today I have a very special person, a vacationing angel. <laughs> and she is called like me, Heidi. Isn't that a coincidence? It's so funny. And she is living all over the other side of the world. So uh, before I talk a lot, I ask her to say something about her and then we will talk about very special things, I guess. Thank you, Heidi. Uh, when basically my story is an interesting one because it's been such a, a weaving journey. Uh, I was a professional flutist for years after college in New York City. And um, after a long <laughs> journey, ended up here on the coast of Oregon. And my husband, right after we moved, died. And we had been very close. I knew no one here. You know, there was a lot of um, turmoil uh, during his sickness. Um, he always told me that he'd get in touch with me after he died, but he was, he was the one who could do that. <laughs> he was the one who could channel. He was the one who meditated. I was the one who could never get there never believed that I was anything but hyper emotional, hypersensitive, too sensitive, too anxious, too emotional, too depressive, uh, never believed that I would hear from him. And uh, it took me a year and a half because I was angry, I was depressed, I was uh, despondent, I didn't sleep. Uh, I was angry that he died and left me here right? Uh, I was just devastated. And I knew a couple of people who were talking to him and hearing from him. And it made me angry, really angry. Because why wasn't he talking to me? And, uh, and then finally, one night, after I cried myself to sleep, I woke up at three in the morning, and I heard this voice say, wake up, get out your pen and paper, we're going to write a book. And I was just shocked. I was, I was so shocked that I did it. I did what I was told. And the next morning I had basically the whole book that we wrote. And it was, a lot of it was in rhyme, which was Randy's way. He loved poetry, never wrote poetry in my life. So I knew that I was talking to him. And he brought me through the stages of grief through the conversation and the poetry. He said, this is a conversation we never got to have when I was dying. And it, it's the most amazing transitional piece. It's encoded, he told me, with the energy of healing grief. And he said, the reason you couldn't hear me is because your grief is like um, a wet blanket. So it sits on you and keeps you from hearing exactly what you want to hear, which is me, right? Because your sadness, you, you're so enveloped in that emotion, you can't hear me. So I learned, he said, we have to develop a new relationship as spirit and human. And until you let me go as a physical being, we won't be able to do that. And after that, I started hearing from other spirits you know, someone associated with my dentist, someone associated with the woman in the hot tub, someone, you know, and I just started getting validation that I was really hearing spirit. Um, and then he just encouraged, I mean, Heidi, it was, it was crazy because he told me to buy a new flute after we wrote the book together. I hadn't had a flute in my hands for 20 years and he wanted me to spend a lot of money on this flute. And I kept saying, you're crazy, I can't play anymore. I, I stopped due to a jaw injury. Buy a flute, bought a flute. Two weeks later, I'm in the recording studio doing an audiobook with improvised flute music. And I was a classical musician. I never improvised in my life. So one thing started to lead to another. He asked me to do meetups. I didn't know what meetups were. And he said, rent a room and tell people what you're doing. And I said, I don't even know what you're talking about, but I did it. And two weeks later, I had two people and now 
not in pandemic times. I live in a little teeny tiny town of 3000 and I get 50, 60 people at my meetups because they want to know who they are. They want to know what it means to be a vacationing angel. They want to know how to be their authentic selves, right? And live in joy because it's so hard to live as a human. Yeah. So you develop these capacities without ever knowing that you have them. Exactly, exactly. And I just denied it. I can't, I've tried, it'll never happen. I had panic, anxiety, so many panic attacks. I could barely leave the house for a while. I took antidepressants for a lot of my life. As I developed my knowledge of connection, those things went away. So first of all, being a vacationing angel is this beautiful concept that Randy gave me. And it says, we're all spirit in human form. And the reason we, as a spirit, in an angelic energy, we believe that we making the choice to come down here in human form because it's a vacation to experience okay. the senses, to, to make love, to eat an apple, to sit by the ocean and listen to it, you know, to experience all the senses that we can't when we're in spirit form. But when we get here, <laughs> it doesn't feel like a vacation anymore. <laughs> especially so, now. <laughs> especially <laughs> now. You know, and there are so many burdens that we carry and, and we get caught up in our own stories, right? So you, I know you've done a lot of work and analysis and, and all the, you know, the, the relating, uh, it's, there are stages, facets of being a human and the archetypes are really important. Um, this goes more into opening the doorway, the pathway to your own gifts so that you know who you are because if you bring that alignment into the world that's integrity that's authenticity then you can live in joy because no matter what's happening around you as spiritualists have said for a million years regardless of what the the external circumstances if internally you're aligned you're okay so what I'm hearing a little bit from what you are saying is don't try hard to get these abilities, <laughs> but just sense into that, feel it, get into it and allow yourself to have them instead of doubting all the time. I mean, not everybody has a husband who gives orders to write a book. You know? <laughs> yes, and he did give orders <laughs> very loudly. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's very, very great. But how can you now um, help other people to, you know, without trying too hard, because you are talking about this wet cloth, which is uh, eliminating the possibility to connect. So not trying too hard, but still arriving there to, to get to know themselves. You were also talking about archetypes. Yes. And, yeah, could you expand a little bit on that? Well, I know that I studied a lot of psychology and there are certainly many different um, theories and applications for even the stages of grief. You know, Elizabeth Kugler, -Law, I mean, you know, when she started that whole, so you, you get into the different stages of things. You look at yourself uh, in terms of, um, I'm, an HR2 or on, you know, there are so many ways to label yourself. And what my work is, is to remove the labels so that we can actually explore the depths of self without feeling the self judgment, because it's that that holds us back. The grief is a wet blanket, the shame, the guilt, the fear. So my fear of not being able to connect 
was a lack of self-esteem and it was in all levels of my life. So if you were to label me, you know, I had the label depressed, anxious, fearful. Those were probably three, the three big ones. And that's enough, believe me. Um, so, the, uh, yeah, <laughs> right. So it really came, it comes down to, I have some tools that I use and I call it the vacation angel couch talk. And we sit energies on the couch and we deal with not only the emotions that arise because emotions are more labels. I'm angry, bad, I'm happy, good. So right away, we've got the, the paradoxes and the paradigms of the good and the bad, the right and the wrong, the pretty and the ugly. We wanna bypass that and, and when we get into the core of it, we go into bodily sensation. So if I feel angry, where do I feel it? And I might feel it here mm -hmm. in my third chakra, right? I might feel it here. If I feel it here, it's a different sensation. And then I go into what's that energy about? What color is it? What shape is it? What size is it? Uh, what does that represent for me? If it's yellow, it could be the sun or it could be cowardice. Mm -hmm. Everybody's different, just like in a, you know, your dream state, it will represent different things. So we go into a much different way of dealing with the present level of the high sensitivity of the individual. What made me a high sensitive? whether my father, as he was in a wheelchair, my mother was a very dedicated teacher. They demanded a lot of me. Uh, was I abused? Was I, you know, whatever happened in your life, that's your story. And the more attached you are to that story, the less freedom you have to explore who you really are. And I didn't know who I was. I just thought I was Randy's wife and I was dead if he weren't here. So um, is it possible so that you, the more you are sensitive, the more we have learned to close it into ourselves and, and not touch it anymore. And so we cannot use it because yes. it's inside. And yes. so with some practices and some help or even only, you know, mindfulness, I mean, to, to observe what is getting going on in yourself, we could slowly uh, get away with these uh, white wet cloths and, and look what is underneath and allow us uh, to feel. Is that what you say? In a, to a great extent, because the, the, the emotions slash sensations, because it's not just emotions which are over labeled. But the sensations are the doorway to the higher self, to God, to source, to the higher self, to angelic realm, to spirit being, whatever rocks your boat, right? It, not everyone is going to aspire to or find themselves connected to spirit in the way I do. So I actually get names, I get you know information. That's not necessary. The, I mean, none of that matters. What matters is that you find your authentic self and you live a happier life. So yes, that's the doorway. The doorway is not the mind. We need to partner with the mind. Without the mind, who are we, right? We need to apply the mind, partner with it, love it, engage it. But without getting in through the heart and the, the, the sensations of the body through that energy, we can't use our gifts. These are all abilities we have. And we're taught to shut it down. Yeah. Society teaches, use your common sense, use your logic, stop being so emotional, stop being so sensitive. Um, you'll never find a job if you're like that. You'll never find a man if you do that, you know, all that, yeah. all that. And closing the heart, you know, because it's not allowed. And uh, I am, I tell you a label, I, I am a Enya type four. So that means very, very, I, I guess maybe you too. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so it's very uh, uh, emotional. 
but I was, you know, um, pushing it away. I tried not to be emotional. So I, although other people said that I'm emotional, I said, I'm not, you know? Yeah. So for me, I, when I did the journey, I had first to learn to not be overwhelmed by the emotions, to allow the emotions to be there. And it's scary. It's totally scary because yeah. when you put them in a, in a corner, then you are safe sort of. And then when they come, oh God, I always said, I know why I put them away because when they are so heavy yeah. and you have nobody as a child, when you have nobody to process the emotions with you, but you get only, don't, don't cry, uh, don't, don't be so silly, don't be blah, blah, blah. So you have no choice to integrate them, you know? Yeah. And then as an adult, it's not easy, but I do think it's, it's uh, worthwhile. I'm not yet a, a medium or something, and I don't know if I ever will be. Well, well you're highly intuitive. Um, yeah. And that's really, it's, it's, we all are, we all have the ability. I'm still shocked that I have any ability to be a medium, really. Um, and that's not my singular purpose. Um, to address the issue about the emotions, it's, it's scary for a lot of people because the emotions they grew up with were either compressed and suppressed and repressed uh, because they were bad. And if we, and you know, when we're young, we all see spirit, we all hear spirit and it's shut down through religion or parental control, whatever. And so we learn that we're wrong that we're bad, that we should be scared of what we think and feel and see and hear. And so it is safer, but for me, I, I couldn't, I never could get there. I, I was just overwhelmed by feeling. And yeah, I had a career, I went to Harvard, I studied music. As a matter of fact, I was in a class with Yo-Yo Ma. Mm -hmm. That was, he, I got to play with Yo-Yo Ma in college. And I'll tell you, I was scared out of my mind. I was never sure of myself. I graduated. I, I, you know, I had career. I was in corporate America for a while. I had kids. I had, a, and I was still a wreck. It's like being a functioning alcoholic. You know, a lot of people function, but inside, I felt if I expressed the emotion the way I really felt it, I would just die. I would explode, that there would be no going back. And yeah, I can relate to that. Uh, and I still sort of don't go there yet completely, I have to admit. Well, and that's what that's what my clients come to me. Because they're so emotional, they feel like their life is a wreck. They can't relate to the world. The world is overwhelming. They're afraid. They have very high anxiety a lot of depression and my what I do in the coaching is help them see these things as gifts but one of the ways so one of the best tools I have Heidi this is awesome and this changed my life this is my octopus <laughs> it was given to me by a child I work with mm -hmm. okay so we've got the tentacles this is us we all have a psychic octopus. This is the way we live our lives when we're high sensitive. We're compassionate, we're empathetic. A lot of times we're telepathic. We pick up the feelings of other people and we build relationships based on what we're picking up, which some people would say was psychic. Mm -hmm. So we're doing that, we're doing that, we're doing that. It's great we end up being social workers and psychiatrists and we end up being nurses. And, you know, we love people. We want to help them. We want to heal them, but we turn into wrecks because we're pulling in all their energy. That's not being compassionate and empathetic. That is actually living their emotions. Mm -hmm. So if I'm with you and you're angry, I'm angry. And I don't know why, because I am a sponge. I am a literal sponge for who you are. So I'm not just, oh, I know how you feel, but I'm feeling it. Can you imagine living out in the world and feeling every single person's emotions that's in the world? <sighs> right? And that's what 
that's what happens. Mm -hmm. So I teach people to bring in their octopus tentacles and find that place. I call it the UES, the unique energetic signature. And everyone has one. And we learn through a guided meditation and energy exercises where our unique energy sits. For me, it's kind of in my lower abdomen on the left. Don't ask me why, that's where it lives. So when I'm feeling out of sorts, I pull in my octopus, I remind myself that energy is not mine, and I go to my energetic place, and then I'm Heidi again, and I'm okay. And this is the biggest lesson so that people can find who they are, right, and not be freaking out all the time in the world. That's interesting because I, I sort of went halfway there. When I feel that there is something which is not my energy, then I do this exercise with, you know, an in, in, in in visionary circle, yes. uh, no, independent, uh, how do you call it? Uh, infinity infinity symbol. symbol. Yes. And around me and the others, whatever it is. And then, you know, I actually did need to do that when my husband was about to die and I was caring for him and all the time here and I was so pulled down by this thing so at a certain moment it was a few days before he died I had to do this because yes. I felt I get drowned into into a hole into a black yes. hole or something and so yes. I felt a little bit bad to have to do that but I thought I, I need to do it because otherwise I go down as well you know wait so. you hear this when my husband was dying he he woke up in this pain he was on the floor and and he kept pushing me away and I was devastated devastated and he would not let me get close. And I actually turned on, I had this recorder on the table and I just was fiddling with it and crying and crying. He had his own language that he was born with and he called it the language of the emotions. And it's unlike any language that anyone's ever heard. It's sort of Native American-y, but not really. And he started to speak his language and I got a few words of it on this recording that I realized afterwards but what he was saying was, goodbye, my love, I'm coming home. And the message which came out in our book through the poetry was, I need to push you away so that you don't go with me. So that's exactly what intuitively you were doing. You needed to, to do that separation, that distance. So he was smart enough to do it for both of us. And, and you were doing the same thing. The one thing that I really, really want to stress, most people, when they talk about spiritual um, energy, they talk about putting around ourselves bubbles of white light, containment, keeping things out that aren't ours. When you talk about the psychic octopus, you're allowing yourself to pull in your energy, not have a barrier against. So when you said earlier, working hard is not the key, I often talk about that because that is push energy. That's pressure against. That is not being in the flow and it doesn't work. So as we, do you know how much energy it takes to keep a barrier up around you and to fight everything off energetically. But if you have, oh, I dropped my octopus, but if you have an octopus here and you're pulled in, it doesn't take energy. It's just a natural state of being. Yes, yes, and you like just a castle, In a castle or something like that. I, I just felt it when you said Yes, I saw you. I mean, that was, I felt you. It was a, it's a release and people discover that. And then they have this energy signature that they start to live in. And for the first time in their lives, they start to feel like they really do have choice. It's a beautiful thing. 
Let me come back to because I'm, I just was doing a series about death and dying because November, you know, and we will be in, in, uh, in December. So we are going towards the light, the new, the new year and everything. What could you say to people who have lost their partner and are devastated? And there was even a woman who said she is ashamed that she feels so much grief and, and, you know, and that she was still crying and that everybody is expecting her after a few days coming back to work and to pretend nothing has happened. Uh, what, what would you say? What, how would you help a person? For, the like first that? thing I would say, Heidi, is that grief is a really personal and individual process. I was a wreck for two years. I had people say to me, I've never seen anyone as devastated as you. I'm not proud of that. Uh, but I do think that, and I, I don't regret a moment of my journey because it was the dark night of the soul and I, I marched through it. But I do believe that the more sensitive you are unless you go through these kinds of enlightening times and self-growth that you and I have been working on, we do not have the ability to process the grief. A lot of it has to do with our loved one. If we're that connected, our loved one is talking to us, but love energy is the most powerful energy there is. So their love energy is pouring into us and we interpret it and label it as sadness and grief. If we could feel that love energy in its power, we would feel nothing but blissful happiness. But the grief and the devastation are interpreted as such. So the love energy just gets distorted. Mm -hmm. Love energy is that powerful. So to a grieving person, let's say, you know, First of all, you need your own time because you're not going to read my book if you're in the middle. You know, people can give you all sorts of tools, but until you're ready to receive them. But the path of conscious awareness has to include knowledge, it has to include some kind of Am I willing to open the door to learn why I feel this way? And how long do I want to be a victim? That was not easy because I was a victim and I didn't realize I was playing the victim, but I was. I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I'm not strong, I'm weak, I'm weak, I'm weak. Um, I was afraid that if I became strong, no one would love me anymore. Yeah, but it's a little bit tricky because uh, when you say not to be a victim, then it can easily be easily be that people then deny the grief and do what oh, do, do, oh, I'm. I'm exactly. you know? So that's it's a um, how it's do a you say it? Sword. Wait, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. it really is, and I really was afraid. If I don't need people. Why would they want to be with me? Why would they hold me? Why would they, you know, they have all these expectations of me and I'm not up for it. And I had a business, you know, all these years, editing, writing, book design, self-publishing, consultation. I've been successful in my work and in my relationships, really, but could not face the idea that I would be taken care of, mm -hmm. even though I'd always been independent. <laughs> And now you are taken care of, no? By a now different I, uh, energy, yeah. So this is really great. I want you to hear this. Um, last night at about three in the morning, I woke up and I knew I might play for you for a couple of minutes uh, mm -hmm. today. Yeah. And the message I got was that the music was for you the, the message coming through, it kept saying it was called, so what they do is they give me a title and a purpose of the music because the music that I'm playing now is all embedded, just like the book was, with uh, certain energies. 
So crossing the Rubicon, that book is embedded with the energies of healing grief, the energies of transmuting loss, understanding how to transmute and feeling the transmutation so that you can feel the love energy that's being shared with you from the other side. Um, my music does all kinds of things. It, it, it deals with fibromyalgia, depression, anxiety, uh, skin disorders, whatever people have needs around. And custom music, and when I play uh, improvisationally online for people, it addresses whatever I'm supposed to address in that moment uh, to integrate the energy of what people need addressed. So the message I got was, this music is gonna be for Heidi and this music is, this music is called Significant Other. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what that meant. And this morning before I started to talk to you, I was back on your website because I wanted to read your bio again. I've read it a few times, but I just found we had so many parallels and I was really, really inspired. And I realized that your partner was no longer with you. I mean, I don't know whether I really understood that the first time I, I read. And I said, oh, that makes perfect sense. Your significant other. Um, and so the purpose of the music, which I'm asking them now to give me, is um, I keep seeing this swing, like to, to naturally swing you into a place of a further self-discovery because there's a sense that things ground to a kind of a halt for you. And yeah, of course you went, you're going through a stage of recovery. So I'm not saying anything new and different, but his focus, his, his name was Mark, yes. His focus, he's, did you hold hands a lot with him? Because he's still holding your hand and he's still by your side. And I have chills all over my body, which is a good sign. He's, um, he was a very tactile person. Yes, yes. And he responded to you in a way that no one else ever had. Exactly, yeah. And he did, and you didn't always need to tell him things that you couldn't express because he knew that was hard for you, but he knew what you, you he felt it anyway. And he could often express the things that you couldn't in words. And you learned a lot from him in that way. Yeah, so sure. exactly. But he learned a lot from you too, Heidi. Yeah, yeah. I know. And he wants you to know that. <laughs> and he wants you to know how grateful he is for having been your significant other and remaining. Okay, and what he's telling me, my husband is also telling me, one of the things that's really important to recognize is that they cannot do up there what they're doing their job if we don't do down here what we're doing we are partners and that will always be true so he will always be your significant other no oh, i'm kidding uh, <laughs> what a beautiful but, oh, i often have the feeling that we are still holding hands you know? yes yes and you are you are so trust it so you see that's mediumship you're feeling i mean i am more of a clairsentient, I feel information, but some people smell, some people hear, some people get it through touch. Feeling him holding your hand is mediumship. That is um, connecting with spirit. And it's just that we don't label it that way. Yeah. And psychic is more globbing on, like going with your octopus and getting information from someone, a human being. And that's why I don't do that work and I don't prophetize because to me, that's not really ethical. I don't wanna go into you and get information. My goal is to, and who's to say where it really comes from, it's all one. But I'm trying to get information straight from source because to me that 
means my, less of a human filter is going to be applied. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, I want to just play for a moment from him to you. Beautiful. A little cold. I don't have a um, thing. That's huh. you know what I when you did this. That was him laughing, and I, I laughed too because he was so often laughing about things, and he he was able to take life. It was very hard for him, but he had this way of you know of laughter, of, of, of being light. And this was I'm, like, I'm... like a cobalt. Like, I don't know how <laughs> yes. you say that in, in a little, like a, um... you know what I mean? Like uh, somebody who makes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I do he know what you a mean. a good actor. He, he discovered by doing these shows together with me, he dis I discovered seeing him that he could have been a wonderful actor. You know, and so I, I, I saw him acting like. <laughs> That's fantastic, like a little imp in your ear. I, I think that um, I feel that his lightness of being, of course, when we get to the other side, we don't have the human body to worry about. So we are light and we are nothing but light, uh, but as for my husband, they have a lot of similarities, which I didn't understand until now, but they're both talking to me. And it's like, my husband could be really goofy, but he was the most intense, serious man I'd ever known. Mm -hmm. Intense, intense, intense. And, but when he went into that goofy place, there was, you know, he had that ability to shift that energy and to, but he had a hard life also. It was hard to be him. It was hard to be him. And I, I'm so blessed to know that he's helping me now because I wouldn't be here without that. His death was a real gift. And it took me a long time to really get that. 
And I need to confess that lately I was thinking too. By his death, he has pushed me into something more, you know, that I have to be more reliant. And we never thought, we never thought we would get there. Yeah, exactly. Would I be doing meetups? Would I play the flute again? Would I be helping people and coaching people? You know, I went to social work school for a year after I had my second child and I realized that I would just get burned out immediately. I was too, couldn't do the work. I couldn't do that with people. Uh, music was my communication vehicle, but, and then writing became my communication vehicle, but I would never, I, can't, I couldn't even imagine doing what I'm doing. And now this is so exciting. This is so exciting. I can't wait to tell you, I just finished my first draft of my novel. Ah, okay. So I wanted to write a children's book on vacationing angels. And I had been talking to Randy about it. And my way of doing my writing is to say when you're ready to give it to me and when it comes through, I don't push anymore because I've learned that doesn't work. And uh, finally, one day, I open a, a document and he starts giving me poetry again. I'm like, no, you don't understand. I don't want poetry. I, don't, I, don't, I want a children's book. He, it all came through in rhyme and it was from the perspective of being an angel and explaining why we want to go on vacation and what it is to live a human experience. So I got that all down and then I realized that there wasn't enough there. And a friend of mine said, Heidi, there's not enough there. It sounds like a lecture. That, that's not what you want. You want it to be engaging. And she was right. So I put it aside. And a few weeks later, I start getting a novel, the beginning of a novel. And I think, I don't know how to write a novel. I, I've rewritten other people's novels. That's my job. But I write dialogue, I do everything for them, but I never wrote my own. I never came up with my own story. So just like the mediumship, I said, no, I could never do that. And now I finished the first draft. And it's this beautiful story. Now, I don't know if it's a great book. Please understand, I, I, I have no idea. But I do know that its message is fantastic because I want people to know how to become who they are and how to develop a new perspective. And so it's about a young girl, she's 17, and it's her and she's, she's unhappy. She's a basketball star in high school, but she's also a social misfit and she gets bullied for her height. And she ends up traveling to the up there down here is Seattle, Washington, where she lives, and the in-between. And so she has all these experiences, and she learns who she really is. And her experiences in the up there with the angels are similar, are, are, could contribute to her journey in her human form. And uh, Randy used to say that vacationing angels, they're up there, the angels. And they sit in what he called the Gateway Cafe. And at the Gateway Cafe, you get to read a menu and choose your pizza or whatever else you want. So he'd say to me, I'd have a pepperoni and onion pizza. And that's like choosing your life in this experience. You get to choose it. And so in the, she goes to the up there and she goes to the Gateway Cafe. And in the Gateway Cafe, there were brochures on the table. And she talks to the angels, what does it mean? What brochure are you gonna choose? What do you mean I have a choice? I don't have a choice. You know, I didn't choose to be this tall. I didn't choose to be miserable. I didn't choose, I didn't choose. And she just learns. So it's called the Gateway Cafe. Um, That's and I'm really excited because I think it will probably, I'll publish it at the beginning of the year. You know, and I want to, to make the curve towards the present time. 
I think we are really at the moment where we need to know who we are. When we More are filled with fear for a strange virus which could kill you and for fear that you kill somebody else because you don't behave in the right way. So when we are influenced by this deep fear and it sinks down and we are getting guilty and wrong again and whatever, so it would really be useful to, to get to know who we really are and what it is about what we are doing and how we are doing the things for, how can I say, to, to enhance people's lives instead of being in fear that I could do anything to you because oh, I might have a virus somewhere. It's you know? saving me. My work is saving me because I believe we're, so there are the frontliners, the nurses, the doctors, the, the workers. What would we do? What I don't, you know, what would we do without them? But we're the spiritual frontliners. We have to hold that place. People come to us because they're holding the, the space in their lives. And we all need to support each other. I go to a regular Zoom meditation and breathing class with a woman, she's wonderful. She's just wonderful. I met her online. She lives in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and she does these, these sessions. It's helped my breathing. It helps me focus. And she comes to my meetups. She says that's where she gets her spiritual medicine. You know, it's a support network. And you're right that I spend a lot of time alone I, I'm living in a, rel, a, a safer place than a lot of people. There's very little here. But because of the numbers and the pandemic, well, this is interesting. You will love this. There's a guy named David G who does meditation. And he's an interesting character. And on Instagram one day I saw that he was talking about COVID-19. And so I owe this to him because he said, co comes from the Latin, which is of course with, together, shared. Vid comes from the Sanskrit, which is wisdom, knowledge. And he said, COVID is shared awakening, shared mm -hmm. knowledge. And I thought, oh my God, that is so beautiful because that is this time. We can either go to hatred and dismissal and distance and separation and con condescension, or we can go to a shared awakening where we have to, you know, this kind of emotion. And 19, of course, is, is a one. So numerologically, that's unity. Mm -hmm. And so I look at COVID-19 as, the beginning of this unifying structure. And yet, look what's out there, like you said. What's out there is a nightmare. And so to not, to know it, but not live it. To exactly. know it, but not live it. It's and, not, and maybe coming also back to that, what you said before with your octopus. Yes. When we try to push it away, uh, these things, and that's, that's not good. But, you know, uh, and being caught by, by this fear is, is not good at all. So we need to, 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 to become, what did I say, the castle, the That's inner right. castle, and not be influenced by these people who say, you should do that and you should do that, but knowing what you, what you need to do. And what I think what we also need to do, and you said it perfectly just now, to, to help people to overcome this fear to not be caught in the fear, because as long as you are in this fear and watch all the horrible news, another death and the, 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 the numbers going up and blah, 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 which can also be true, but it doesn't mean when the infection, when the, when the test says you are positive that you will die, not, not at all, no? But that we are sort of in this fear, oh, it could happen, it could happen, fear of death, which is underneath. And it's really, a 
a possibility to help people to face our death because we will die no? but not to be so fearful about it and not be instrumentalized by others who need your fear mm. to, to do what they want to do. They feed on it, yes. Yeah, so we need really to, uh, to create a, a coalition of, of, of people who, who are able to handle the fear, especially we who we are very sensitive, no, we, we have, a, I think, quite a heavy load to, to work for ourselves, but giving the inspiration to other people that fear is not the response we need to have even when they put all the numbers around your, your that's you, you need to well be. and and then the worst fears i always said if randy died that would you know that was my worst fear the worst loss i could ever face and it happened and i'm still alive and and i've actually grown it took me you know time but here i am well a few weeks ago i had to have a little eye surgery and i had to have a covid test beforehand now like i said i have been really isolated since March, really isolated. My COVID test came back positive <laughs> and I was terrified. Yeah. I had no symptoms, but I was terrified. And my sister was terrified. And I, I thought, how did this happen? It, it can't happen, it can't be. And the doctor said, well, it is, it is. I went through quarantine, I had no symptoms. My sister started having, not feeling well. But then I got a call two and a half weeks later saying I had a false positive test. But, and I knew inside, but that didn't do me any good because <clears throat> a test is a test, right? Excuse me. So we went through all the stages, mortality, Where's my will? Do you know my passwords? <laughs> What's going to happen? Um, will I ever see my mother again? She's 87 and across the country. Will I ever see my sister again? You know, all this stuff. We had to look at that, like close up. And that's part of the reason it happened, because it gave me even more awareness around mortality and death and aging. And that's what I, I work with people on. I really try to walk myself through the process in an enlightened way. I had my moments. I, I had my moments where I was scared. Because you feel like you said, any minute, any minute I could, I could contaminate the world, any minute I could die, any minute I could get really sick. Where would I go to the hospital? You know, I live kind of in the middle of nowhere. What, what would I do? It just, and that's what the whole world, I think, is dealing with. And so, but you're right. What you resist persists, just like you said. So, the more you're resisting, the more your immune system is compromised. The exactly. spiritual always manifests physically, always. Exactly. exactly. And so, I think we <laughs> we could maybe end with a good note. What message do you tell people who are so much fearing and even? being tested positive and even if it's not a false positive which by the way are many false positives which and yeah they swore to me there weren't any such thing but my sister a famous scientist said to me that's not true one in a hundred is a false positive it, that's good to know first of all at least i didn't know that yeah. yeah yeah what's the one message i would self-integration we have to work on ourselves that is the only way to not only stay sane but the more alignment we're in the more integrity we have the more integrity we have the more we find it natural to live in authenticity the more we live in authenticity the better we feel our third chakra opens. COVID is related to the third chakra and the lungs and breathing and not telling your tooth. You don't speak your truth, your lungs shut down. We are a society that does not speak truth. 
We're a society of fake news. We're a society of telling lies. So is it any wonder that this is the, right? The, the place that the virus has chosen to. So speak truth, know truth, hear truth, be truth, and, 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 and energetically we will thrive. You and I may not be here to see it, mm -hmm. but that's the only path I see ahead. That's the only one that makes any sense to me at all. That's wonderful. And you say work on yourself, and I would like to add and enjoy yourself. And enjoy the work. Enjoy, enjoy the don't work. you wish, don't you wish there was a, another word besides work and play? Yeah. Like that shows that work is not a bad thing because work implies hard. No, no. Right? Yeah. I, I'm working on that. <laughs> I'm working on that. I want a different word. So, because words are frequency. So. Yeah, you invent a wonderful word for I'm that. I'm going to invent a wonderful word. I'll let you know. <laughs> so, you better invent it than, we, than myself. When I invent it, people say, whoops, what is that? <laughs> that's right. That's right. But they're great. <laughs> they're great. I try my best because I don't have the. The daily practice with Mark, I had it all the time, you know, he was American. So now I'm talking not so much English and I'm losing it slowly. So it went uh -huh. so good for me. <laughs> well, you and I are going to have to talk more often. Yeah, that would be great. And I, I would really be great. You for, You're so for wonderful. I love talking to you. And you, you made me cry in a good, very good way. It was very, very touching. My heart was and still is yeah yeah very open you. that's it's my christmas gift thank you for from you yeah so people should know where to find me right oh that would be great but i will also put it on the in the website and under the okay the, and i put it in the chat just now i don't know whether people yeah do you that. better read it now uh okay. so that it is the so audio. my website is vacationingangel.com um, well, I have another one, Heidi, uh, harvardgirledits.com, which is my book service, but so they may find that, but I'm the same person. Um, and they'll find all the information they need on custom music, coaching sessions, classes. I have one called writing your spirit contract, uh, so that you can set your parameters with the spirit world. So you don't live in fear regarding that. Cause some people are afraid to, to engage, um, writing workshops, finding your authentic voice. So all these things now, of course, on Zoom, uh, but I love, love, love doing what I do. And it's very satisfying and it seems to help a lot of people and that's all that matters. That's all that matters. And you have helped me today. And I hope I can help you with getting the- Absolutely. You have already, I did. <laughs> It's just so comfortable to talk to you. I feel like we've known each other forever. Yeah, that's true. Maybe we did. Maybe we. I, I would imagine that we have. We came here with a contract to meet us. That's right. For sure. For sure. I have no doubt about that. Okay. So thank you for the invitation. I, I appreciate it very much. Bye bye. bye.